Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday, and that can only mean one thing. It is the Friday Dirt to Dust mailbag. Can't wait to answer some questions. Is that applause? Today. We have applause The people now? love it. The people love the mailbag. <laughs> that is they incredible. They love the mailbag. We, we are upgrading <laughs> this show. We got <laughs> a generated applause. <laughs> well, all right. Calm, calm down there. We got, there's a very small production budget, so those aren't hey, going to get that much better, but yes. We've got random ramping fake up people clapping isn't, is good that's anyway. all we got. I like it. We got to get the little air horn. <laughs> and then, oh, uh, does, that, wait, does that mean dude, I can bleep you I'm out there now? Like, I'm just going to bleep you out in a random thing. You're not even going to be saying anything rude or, or off-putting. I'm just going to bleep you out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's what every podcast from now on is going to look like. It's going to move my mouth and everybody's going to be like, what is he saying? Bleep. <laughs> no, He's not saying nothing. He can't talk. No, we're doing it. We, you know, it's, it's getting that time. We've done enough now where it's like, let's let's see what we can do to make this thing better and cooler and funner. I know that's yeah, not a word. More absolutely. entertaining and whatnot. Got to keep the um, listeners happy. Because we're definitely not that talented, absolutely. so we got to find something else. <laughs> we got to find other ways. Oh. Oh, self-deprecating. Anyway. Humor. Anyway, like we said, it is Friday. It is mailbag time. Um a little little caveat to today's episode. Um, this was Caleb's idea, and I said sure. The now by you know by now the cat is pretty much out of the bag. Um, I did buy a four by e Wrangler, much to the chagrin of many people who thought I would get something with more horsepowers, which is kind of why I bought the four by e because everybody expects me to come out with something just stupid powerful, you know, all the horsepowers, and I'm like, guys, I have forty six ninety nine, like. Because people have asked me that. It's been a it's been a mixed, you know, kind of a mixed reaction. Most people are like, okay, once I explain to them why I bought it, like, okay, that makes sense. And, you know, I have forty six ninety nine. I got all the Woo Pow. Like, I got all the Woo Pow and more I could ever want. We got Josh down in Charlotte with the Hellcat, who's got even more Woo Pows. We got Candace in Nashville. She just bought the three ninety two. You know, we have we have so many we have so many Jeeps that are exactly what you would think outlaw is. Um but the market is going electrified, like whether we like it or not. And I don't think it's going to go electrified as fast as some people think it's going to go, whether we like it or not, it's going that way. So hybrids are going to continue to be a thing. Uh, EVs are going to continue to be a thing. But when I looked around, I didn't see a lot of four by E's being done anything to them. Not much over 35, 37. I mean, hell for the first two years of it, you couldn't even regear them above. I think, I think it was 456 it was maybe 456. because of a computer mm-hmm. issue. Right. Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't even regear them. So people were not throwing forties on these things or even thirty eights. You know, I consider big boy anything is over anything over thirty seven. Thirty seven is kind of the top end of normal stuff now. Thirty seven, thirty eight up, which you know, thank you thirty eights for Nittos and Falcons. Thirty eights are a thing now. Um, that's what I kind of consider getting into big boy territory with with bigger tires, heavier tires, stuff that can break stuff. So I didn't see anybody doing it. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna do it. It's been a while since I've done something truly stupid. <laughs> 40s on stock axles, 50 freaking suspension kits in six months. Like, I haven't done something like that in a while. So why not absolutely build a 4 by e Because we are sitting here just about eight weeks from Mob Moab. So why not buy a brand new 4 by e Why not build it specifically to go out to Moab and put Pritchett Canyon and Cliffhanger yeah, on the schedule? Right, let's do it. Meh, why so, not? And it just makes sense. Why I've not? actually got a couple questions today for some other engine stuff. So let's just make this an engine and uh, and and it's going to be two oh four by, by e and maybe a little three six day. Let's I let's like do it. it. Let's, let's get right it. after it. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take. <laughs> This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. And we are back. Uh, so like I said, today's going to be a uh, an engine day. I think we've actually gotten a couple questions in uh, regarding the different powertrains. 
Uh, oh, yeah. We love to talk about the 392, but I think the understated uh, heroes, well, I don't even call them heroes, but the understated engines, <laughs> the less powerful than not, you know, the the driving force, the the 36 has been out for a while that got some upgrades at the JL platform, the new 2.0 turbo, well, new to the to the Jeep brand. Uh, and then the brand new, which is the 4xE platform, which is, uh, um, it's a hot topic right now. So I Let's just let, before we jump into the four by e stuff. Let's let's kind of get the the one that I see out of the way all the time. Two uh, o versus three six. Mm. <laughs> uh, is this in the context of what is better, quote unquote? Is that what they, these uh, questions are all about? Which is better? I think they're asking. I think the original question that I saw was more asking opinions on both longevity of the two O. How do people like the two O versus the three six? I mean, the three six is a pretty proven platform at this point, um, with the upgrade in addition to the uh, higher compression and an eight speed uh, for the JL models. Um, that three six in its base form has been out for a little bit, um, but yeah. So I think the the more prominent question was how does the two O stand up? against the 36. Wow, dude, the, the 850RE, the eight-speed transmission that came out in the JL, saved the 36. <laughs> it absolutely saved the 36. The 36 was, um, and and just so people know, the 36 that's in the JL and the JT is not the same 36 that was in the JK. Um, and it's other iterations and other vehicles that the 36 was in. Before that, that three six, that three six probably had more in common with the three eight than it does the new three. The new three six, like you said, it's it's a the up the top end is completely different. It's higher compression. It's much higher compression, which is why you, um, you know, with those, I'll throw a supercharger at a twenty twelve to twenty eighteen three six all day long. I, I don't, I don't love throwing them at the new higher compression ones that much. That's how you. That's generally how you send a connecting rod into outer space and make it an astronaut. Um, and I'm generally not a fan of doing that unless I do it to my own vehicle. I definitely don't want that to happen to right. a customer. Or if you're rig. trying to get a, a, a quick reason to tell the wife you need a, a three. If you really want a Hemi, <laughs> floor pin that sucker. So mm-hmm. because of the changes that they made to the three six, it did make it better. It made it a lot better. And the eight speed, which is behind, which is also behind the two zero, um, and the three ninety two, but it's a different eight speed. Um, that that made that three six engine viable again from dying a slow death to man this is actually a really good engine that said it is still a 36 it is still naturally aspirated it is still just a regular old nothing special v6 in a day and age where everything's getting for the most part everything's getting turbocharged everything's getting electrified not a lot getting supercharged but turbos tend to be what people are doing so there's not a lot you can do to it you know throwing there's not a lot of tuning you can do you know, you can't throw an exhaust and an intake on there and tune the fuel injectors and get 50, 60, 70 horsepower like you used to be able to and, and naturally aspirated V6. It's just not going to happen. Um, and that's a credit to Jeep. They've they've That engine is fairly tuned to where what you get is, it's pretty close to as good as it's going to get. It's it's pretty it's pretty legit. Um, then you flip over to the 2.0 turbo side. Well, I mean, first and foremost, it's missing two cylinders. Call that what it is they made up for it by throwing a turbo on it um which again you can have the argument turbo versus supercharger all day long this one has a turbo that's what we have um it is a peppy little four-cylinder engine um it is i like i've got a story about that actually well you and i did that episode Um, last year remember where we talked about our favorite rigs yeah and yeah i'm sure you remember this one of mine that i picked if i was going to take it right out of the box was a Rubicon Unlimited 2O Turbo. And you asked me why. Yeah. And you were a little bit, you were a little bit, um, you, you sneered at me a little bit. I thought you think you think I, you thought I was a little crazy. <laughs> and and I kind of ran through no, that uh, of the why. And I still no, stand I, by I never, that. Yeah, I never thought you were crazy because honestly, and th- and this is the God's honest truth. If I could put that two liter turbo in the LJ for pennies on the mm. dollar from doing a hemi swap or something, I'd probably try to do it. Um, so I don't know if you realize this or not, but I actually bought one of the very first two liter turbos that hit the lot. Um, this is October of 2018. I forgot um, that thing was a two Oh, that was, it was one of the very first ones It had its little quirks, but, um, it was, I was one of the first two liter turbos on forties. It was, uh, the first two For a few hours to have a, uh, aftermarket blow off valve, um, and exhaust. Like I did, I had some fun with it. 
Look um, at you doing R and D. Uh, the uh, that test drive, I not only bought those four tires, um, I bought the Jeep because uh, the sales guy talked to me and he's like, "Hey man, I've got a whole whole lot of two O turbos coming down to the lot. I need you to come check one out. I know you're in the market." And I was like, mm, "I'm not driving a four cylinder Jeep." Did that already? Not ever happening again. <laughs> Until it did. He's like, no, no, no. You, you, you got to come test down. He's like, dude, and it, it's a buddy of mine. And he was like, man, if you come down here and if you don't like these things, I'll pay for your gas to go to Boone. And at the time, I was working at Ruba Trucks, so, so I'm used to Hemi Swap Jeeps. Mm-hmm. I'm used to the three six yep. JL. Like, you know, we that's that's all they did at the time. We're almost almost exclusively, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. A freaking six four. Um, so I was I was pretty used to it. And even driving Hellcats, so that was one of the first couple Hellcat swaps came out. And uh, so I was like, you know what? A couple hours of my time, no big deal. If I don't like it, he pays my gas, I go back home. So, uh, yeah, and I, I paid for that test drive because I took that freaking thing home. Uh, I loved it. Um, the That turbo is extremely peppy for what it is. Yeah, and yes, it's, it's a small yep. engine, um, but that is the way this is going. Look to the future. And Jeep is, so. is hinted at putting the uh, hurricane twin turbo in line oh, six man, I can't wait. and some newer models. God, if, I can't wait for that. If that happens on the road, Dude. we'll see. Um, but that's going to produce as much power as a, as a six uh-huh. for me, um, which is going that to be, be insane. So, awesome. so I, uh, I welcome the changes. I welcome the advancement and, and different engine op- uh, opportunities and platforms. Uh, and that two Oh, it, it and I will say it's a chattery engine. Like it's, it's a little bit annoying. Um, but agreed. I felt like it was faster than the three, six with the right gears. That thing is a rocket ship. Uh, and if you don't really care about gas mileage because your foot will go to the floor add a blow off valve and it sounds freaking awesome. <laughs> well, and the thing, what's the main difference it. when you get into a turbocharged four cylinder versus that V six, we said, you know, I said, you can't really tune on a V six, that V six very much. You can absolutely do but some things on that two O and there's plenty of guys I've known some guys that are looking to use them as race engines in um, Ultra 4 because obviously it's a lot cheaper to run that engine than it is. I think it, I think it would hold up and be peppier long term in desert stuff for sure over the 3.6. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's way cheaper to do it um, than doing a 6.4 because, you know, I don't, I don't know that you'll see another 392 Jeep in 4600 anytime soon simply because of the cost it's why you're not going to see there are some really legit broncos being built out there um you know i look at john williams as one with the ford performance school he's got a little bit of backing from ford on that but he doesn't have as much as you as people think he's pretty much done that and he just went out and ran the mint 400 and finished it so um but then when you look at the ones that lauren and vaughn are driving the bailey's driving and that um and that brad's driving those are three times the budget it's just crazy so i think you're not going to see another 392 so the next logical replacement for that to me would be the 20 turbo And there's a lot of tuning you can do on those things to get those things well up into the force you can get it over 400 horsepower Mm -hmm. Uh, i don't know about reliable there's still some testing to be done on that but absolutely close to four and probably over four reliably and you can't do that with the three six you just can't do it no not not without risking blowing it up and, and sending a rod to heaven so as to which one is better, I mean, kind of pick your poison. Depends on what you need, yeah. Uh, if you if you like turbo noises, if you're open to the idea of a smaller displacement engine and adding uh, forced induction, um, yeah. test drive a 2.0. Um, and if you're a 3.6 guy, don't talk shit about the, the 2.0 until I you did. go drive one. Candace is. Uh, Candace. Yeah. Candace changed my mind. Candace has changed my mind. Yeah, we're going to get when into she that. Had, when she had F-bomb and that 2.0, which I think she might still have mm-hmm. it. She's selling it before the 392. That Jeep is what sold me on the 20, 100%. And then a buddy mm-hmm. of mine went and bought one. Yeah. And he wanted, he knew what he wanted. And he's like, ah, oh, it's just got every, he had everything he wanted, but it didn't have the 36. And he ended up buying the 20. Mm-hmm. And he never regretted that decision. So those two right there, my real life experience sold me. Yeah. And I, I loved mine. I, I loved every minute of ownership of mine. Um, it was a fun, fun Jeep. I just decided I didn't want a car payment anymore. And um, the the bug to get something to build my dream Jeep was, was absolutely there. I was in between stretching a YJ to LJ length or just buying an LJ. And as we all know, I ended up buying the LJ. Um, and I just wanted to free up that car payment. And um, I don't regret get, getting rid of it. I, if I had to go buy another JL right now, I'd probably for my budget, I would probably grab a two liter. Uh, but again, pick your poison. Um, 
But kind of segueing into new engine options, that leads us into mm. the 4 e which we know does have that mm-hmm. same 2-liter engine. Mm-hmm. But now we've got advertised 29 miles in reality. Not quite so. Uh-uh. But 25 to 29 miles of pure electric range, um, which we both have experience on that, too, because my fiance has one. And, and now you I- have one. So, I'm a tree hugging uh, hippie, everybody. So let's talk about <laughs> let's talk let's talk about the electrification. <laughs> I did that too. I walked in the house one night, and I think I said something. I said something to my wife. She was home cooking dinner. I walked in, and I was driving the Jeep that night because usually I split now between the four by e because it's not really built. It's not built yet, and my F three fifty. But find two more diametrically opposed vehicles. I don't know. And I walked in one night, and I said, "Honey, your tree hugging hippie husband is home." And she just kind of looked at me like, "Go back to work. You're an idiot." Which is the look that I'm used to getting, not just from her. It's go away, you're an idiot. Because I do lots of idiotic things. <laughs> um, so yeah, I you know, I, I I'm getting used to it. Um, I, I don't buy the 29 mile range. I I think 20 to 23 for me. Um, I do get on the bypass to get to the office every day, and you're not going to have hybrid mode. You're not going to use e above about 60 65 miles anyway. Um, nor are you going to have it no, with the acceleration of kind of getting onto the interstate. But driving around town, if I've got some errands to go run or I got to take the kid over to lacrosse practice, over to the ice rink or something like that, and I'm not getting on the highway to do that, um, I, I I do know I'm saving some fuel economy, which is not something I'm used to. I am not oh, used for sure. to that. Um, you know, I, like I'm getting sure. used to it. But So when Brittany was driving. I give it a thumbs up so far. Yeah. Right. And so when Brittany was driving around Charlotte uh, every day, because her, her, her work is, is in downtown Charlotte, um, she was getting, like, even with the 35, she's, she gets, I mean, now she doesn't drive like most people. She's Grandma. Conservative driving. She gets like a true 23, 24 miles um, yeah, out of that range. Um, but the key is you got to have the region braking on, which if you play with the region braking, it's kind of fun. I'm still getting used to that. that. It pissed me off at first. Uh, it's a little freaky at first. <laughs> like, screw this damn Jeep. I hated it. Uh, but drive it for a little while, then you turn it off, and you're like, oh, shit, I don't like this. It's like, I can I can stop pretty quickly on this. But around town with Regen on, um, and there's actually a setting that um, can help build back some of that bat- extra battery uh, uh, battery power. Um, it, it's pretty efficient. Like, I like it. It definitely saves gas. Um, if you're using that, I wouldn't use... And, and again, this is not a full-time electric vehicle. And that's, I think, where people kind of get this wrong. Yes, it's only 23 to 25, maybe 27 miles on electric range. This is not a full-time yeah, electric hybrid. vehicle. So yeah. you're not going to run electric on the highway. Um, and if you are only using it on electric, you still have to remember, there is a combustion engine in that thing. It has to run through gas and change oil. And it's a turbo, which means you actually need to warm that turbo up or you're going to have problems. Um, and I think that's the only issue that I've really seen out of the four by E are people who don't understand that and they're using it as a full-time electric vehicle to run around town and they're seeing some issues on that side. Um, but otherwise, um, I think the complaint that you heard was gas mileage was piss poor on the highway. Dude, the four by E groups. <laughs> or, or mileage, just mileage. They are general. lit, the four, son. They, uh, the, the, man, no, I thought the regular These are way better. Were, these are way f- oh man they get <laughs> spicy look i because I, I found this question oh, yeah. we were looking through mailbag questions we were like yeah let's make this a four by e whatever and i was like all right let me just scroll through and it took me all of 30 seconds to get something in this group and i'm like you know it's not really a question but i'm gonna turn it into a question and you know bear with me here because there's there's mm-hmm. some I, I'm, I might throw some karen voice into this but and i'm not gonna call this dude out i could call his name out. i'm sitting here looking at the post um but it is in the Jeep Wrangler 4 by e group, which again, oh my God, so entertaining. If you're one of those people who likes to sit in a bench at like the mall and just people watch, just join this group and just, oh my God, it's amazing. So, and I quote, this is bull bleep. I've been on the highway doing 60 to 65 plus in e-save. This is what I get. My twin turbo, and he's got some grammar issues. This is what I get. And he's got a picture of his dash. My twin turbo V8 gets two times as good as this. And he shows a picture of him getting 14.3. Now, as a 4 by e driver, if you are only getting 14.3 miles to the gallon, um, go back to driving school. Because I am not, I think we can all agree I am not easy on any vehicle that I drive. And I'm at like 18.2-ish, 18, 18.2. So... 
And if it says anything, Brittany's at. I'd say that's about right because I'm. There's no way my ass is ever getting twenty. Mm-hmm. So not happening. Never gonna happen. But to call it BS, like you know, to call it BS that you're going on the highway. First of all, it tells me you don't understand hybrid. And there's a reason why people. There's a reason why hybrids get better fuel economy in the city than they do on the highway. You are literally driving around a freaking brick. Okay. The least fuel economy economic vehicle on planet earth. Like there's not many worse than Jeeps and Broncos, like big four, you know, big SUVs. And we're just going to throw a two O turbo in it with a freaking hybrid drive. Well, two hybrid drives, technically like you can't, you got to be realistic, man. And you get in there. And even if you put it on, you know, the little button over to the left, where you got the three modes. You got basically gas mode, basically electric mode, and then basically hybrid mode. Even if you went to all electric mode, the second you get on the freaking interstate, you're going to get a warning that says electric mode not available. It's just going to happen, like, and it's going to kick you in either hybrid or e-save. E-save being basically you're on mostly gas and you're saving the battery for some other time. Like, if I want to go wheel in e-mode, I will drive from the hotel to the trailhead and gas, and then I'll put it on electric and I'll go... I'll go wheel silent, little silent service action. Hey, yeah, but that's but no matter what, part you have when you get that much wind resistance mm-hmm. with that much weight and that much not aerodynamic design, you're going to do that. So mm-hmm. that tells me two things. It tells me he does at fourteen point three and bitching about the highway mileage. That tells me he doesn't understand the principle of a hybrid. That's not what that vehicle was built for. And it also tells me he doesn't know how to drive because mm-hmm. if you're getting fourteen point three and I'm getting eighteen point two. You're just as you're just as worse as me than I am from Brittany. And I'm way worse, I can guarantee you. If she's at 20, he's a terrible driver. Terrible driver. Even with the the two liter turbo by itself without the electric mode on mine, I was getting oh my gosh. Uh yeah, he's 18 driver. to 20 miles a gallon all day. And I I yeah. did not drive that thing very easily. Um, but also I want to add on to that. It's not just it it's very most likely aggressive driving. Um also, though, you need to go in those settings because there is a very specific setting that is diverting and almost using that two liter turbo as a generator to repower the battery. If you have that on, that will kill your gas mileage. Uh, you're using more fuel. You're using the engine longer. You're spooling the engine up higher in the RPM range to do that, uh, to recharge your battery faster than regen alone. So if you have that on, that's got to be turned off. Um, if you're going after fuel economy, and and I've played this game before to see how I, I hyper mileaged, yeah, I hyper mileaged Britney's you get? Uh, Britney's four by e. Uh, at one point, I did see 28 miles to the gallon. Woo! Um, that is staying at or under speed limit, using electric around city as much as possible. No fun. No fun. I mean, we're, we're, windows I mean, up, no I mean, AC, we're, we're talking no re- blower, no region, radio, no nothing. Time, yeah, Blech. right. And we're talking time your your slowdown and your starts so that you're maximizing efficiency so that you're whatever you use from region for that. slowing down, you're not killing that by taking off. No. And I did this for like a week and a half, two weeks, because I just wanted to see what it could do. Uh, there are definitely ways and it's not fun to drive it like that. Cause it's, you know, you're driving like a grandma, but there are ways to increase that, that miles per gallon. Um, but I would say the most two common reasons why you're not going to get good mileage on that is because you're driving like an asshole or, uh, you've got that mode on that's re that's regenerating the battery faster. Yeah, if, you're, than if you're trying to hyper mileage it, you say grandma driving, that's driving like grandma looks at you and you're like, you suck. <laughs> Even grandma's telling you to get She's the hell like, out of the way. Hurry up. Let's be honest. <laughs> right. But I wanted to see what it was capable of, of getting um, because they advertise. Now, once again, this is MPGE, which is totally different. And that might be its own episode one day or a mailbag question. What are the differences between the two? But combined electric and Your total range combustion yeah. engine efficiency. Um, they're, they're calling it like, you know, 47, 48 MPGE and they market that. Uh, so I really wanted to see how true that got and how close I could get to that on, um, just city driving and, and going around. Obviously I never, and I'm going to throw mine on 38s and take it to Bridget Canyon. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever. Uh, which I can't wait to see. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be personally fun. pretty excited to see, uh, see what you do. I, I put up a post in that group. I put that post up like last week and I said, Hey, I'm not, you know, I see all these four by E's. Where's these built ones. And I saw one guy. One guy posted his with a tire size over thirty eight, over thirty seven, out of like like 
60, 70 mm-hmm. people were posting Jeeves. It was like, uh, it was just probably more than that. It was a, it was, there was a lot of engagement on it. One dude. And I didn't even know it was a four by mm-hmm. E because I had had it repainted because of the corrosion issue. And instead of painting it back with the four by E, he painted it back with Rubicon red. So with, unless you pop the hood, you didn't even know or look inside of it. You didn't even know it was a four by E. So yeah. And it really wasn't even built. He really didn't even have it built because he, the picture he posted was like three quarter from the passenger side. So I didn't even see the charging port. So I didn't know. I was like, that's not a four by E. And he's like, Oh no, it was painted. I had the corrosion issue and I went back with the Rubicon red. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But you just don't see it. Um, and one guy told me that's because most of us lease it and we wanted the tax credit. And I'm like, really though? Like, I don't think that's no. Yeah. There's another group. I want to say it's four by E enthusiasts. Um, something like that. There's one that's way more active than the other. And there's two or three guys on, uh, on forties in that one. And they look phenomenal. And they're, they're putting them through the ringer and testing them out. There's a guy in Iceland on, um, on forties or 42s or something huge in Iceland. And he's putting it through the it ringer for the cold weather testing. Yeah, I think he done. was one of the first guys to put a taller or, or more substantial gear ratio than 456. Mm-hmm. And two, he was one of the first ones to do that. We're going to so 513. It. I'm excited to see where the testing goes on that. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's gonna be good. I can't wait to see what we do with it and how we test in R and D. If you haven't seen the R and D episode, go check that out because we're gonna do some R and D on the four by E. Um, but yeah, so I think those are two solid questions. Um, and we're we're Not definitely gonna sure. test them out the best we can. But to just to recap, two O versus three six, pick your poison. If you want a little pep and step and hear some cool turbo noises, go two O. If you want tried and true and no issues and straight out of the box, you don't want to mess with it, go three six. If you want to be innovative and uh, test something out to its <laughs> limits and maybe get a little buy a four by and build the hell out of it. So, yeah, that's all I got. And we can and we can man, we should have just made a whole episode out of this. We could have just gone on about four by E stuff. Maybe we will. I don't know. There's a lot more on four by E and two O and the motor differences. We hadn't even brought in the eco diesel. None of that yet. So um, I am for making a T-shirt, though, that says free the hurricane. I would love to have a hurricane. Ooh man. I know we can't have it yet. I've been told you can't fit it. Because of the, they have to redesign the entire firewall. That's why it's not in there. So I think I think we're looking at least twenty twenty eight, probably maybe even longer, before you're going to see the hurricane. So yeah, I'm, I'm here redesign. for it, man. I guarantee mm-hmm. you that thing comes out. I just order it. Just I'm, I just yes, all the yeses. So okay. maybe that'll be an episode like four oh, yeah. years from now. We'll see. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that's all I got for Friday. It's time for the weekend, right. man. We're done with the mailbag. That's over. Um, as always, guys, appreciate you guys coming, hanging out, listening to us talk about random, stupid things and being random, stupid people. Uh, just don't forget, like, comment, give us ideas, subscribe, give us the good reviews on the Apple podcast, drop us the comments and the questions on YouTube. We appreciate every single one of you and appreciate all of that. Can't wait to bring you more next week. Um, we're not even going to tease it yet because I don't even we'll know what we're doing next week, but <laughs> tune in, hit the subscribe button. We'll figure this crap out as we go. Uh, is next week the uh, one of the interviews? I can't remember. You know what? Even if I know, I'm not going to tell you. Hit the subscribe button. You'll find out when we when everybody else finds out. Dang it. That's all I got, guys. Caleb, appreciate you as always. Have a great weekend, man. We'll see you next week on Dirt to Dust. Peace out, everybody. You've been listening to Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.